uh, today's meeting to order. Um, looks like Mimi Hodgers, our videographer, is here. Very special one. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, so, EJ, we have no minutes? No to, minutes. To consider? No, no. All right. So, Sandy, it looks like you're number one. Oh, goody. Okay. Um, would you like to take a couple of minutes and uh, lay out the situation? Sure. Um, can I sit in a place where I can see you all? Can I like just move that chair over? Sure. sure. I'm not used to this. <laughs> You're not used to it. Do I need just st st stand up here so we can all see you? Oh, no, not that I so conscious already. Yes, please. All right. But did you all get what BJ sent you? Yeah, so your pictures. Yeah. I printed one out. That's oh, did you? Okay. Yep. Uh, I brought a they, computer. It was emailed, but I have one that's printed Which out. Which one? Okay. Yeah, no, those were all the pictures. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other ones yeah. were just of the snow and snowmen and stuff like that. Yeah. We didn't and see. they were emailed. We didn't need to see those. So Dave Murphy suggested that I come and meet you all. He's the Ward 5 counselor. Um, and uh, because it's been an issue that I haven't been able to get resolved, um, and I understand that, I understand why, but I still need, I'm trying to do something about that this year before the snow falls. Um, my name is Sandy Mandel, and I live at 64 Liberty Street in Bay State. And um, the issue, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that this group might be able to provide some help. Um, this has been an ongoing issue since 2008. Um, according to the DPW drive, drivers and the city planner, Wayne, what was Wayne's last name? Fiden. Fiden, yeah. I met with him. Um, they said that there's a curve in the road as you go down Bay State that, that such that it, I mean, it, it doesn't look to me like a huge curve, but I've been told that the way that it goes is that it goes straight and then it goes like this. It just curves um, in a sudden way. That because of that, the plows leave a huge amount of accumulated snow. The plow kind of lets loose in my driveway. And um, it's, uh, it's usually in a driveway that's already been dug out by hand. I park my car towards, it's a long driveway, but I, I park my car down towards the end and have usually gotten up pretty early to uh, dig out as soon as I can. Um, when I contacted the DPW, I, the, year, the first year that I was on my own, I was told that if we did this for you, we'd have to do it for everyone. Um, this, another time that I was calling, I was told that it was being dumped proportionally, but in fact, it's a neighborhood um, sideshow. People come to see in my neighborhood how much snow has been left in Sandy's driveway. And the third time, the third year, I was told, we don't dig out driveways, ma'am, when in fact, um, I never was asking anyone to dig out my driveway. I'm very capable and able to dig out my own driveway and am proud that I can do that. Um, but I've actually gone as far as to dig out the entire area in front of my house in the street. To dig out the street, thinking maybe if I dig out the street when there's only two, like a foot, that when it comes through, somehow it'll keep going and it won't dump at all. And, um, but it didn't, it didn't work. Um, last year, I finally ended up having to call a plow, as I'm sure the storm that you will all remember, that it was a storm, and then on top of there, it rained, and it turned into kind of bouldery chunks of ice. And I finally, I gave up. I mean, I'm standing there, standing on the top of this snow, and I finally called a plow. And the guy came by, um, somebody that everybody on the street, or a lot of people on the street use, and I called him up, and he said, I'm sorry, lady, I'm not willing to ruin my plow trying to move this. He, he went in once and said, no way, I'm not going to do this. And he gave me the name of an excavator. I literally had to bring in an excavator to do this. And before he came, um, the place where it had started dumping was in the, my side, not my sidewalk, I didn't have a sidewalk going this way in front of the house. The walkway that goes up to my house is like four steps and then a sidewalk that leads up to the house. And in order to get my mail, I had to clear that. And it was less, that one was less than the driveway. So the picture that you see me standing there, it, it was both, um, I'm standing on top of what the plow had left, which, which was five feet, eight <coughs> inches 
of chunk of ice. And I literally, I paid an excavator $70 to come in and to move. And, and all he did was, you know, I mean, he moved it. And then he said, what do you want me to do that? I said, just dump it in my yard. I don't care. So, you know? Sandy, can I ask you a question? Do you, do you see and hear a solution? I mean, you're, I'm sure you've thought about this. Yes. Is there something we could, could consider as a solution? Sure. What I, had, what I had said on a couple of different occasions is I really don't mind if the snow gets shoved into my yard. It's really okay to do that. What I can't do is I can't, one, I can't dig out what gets left at the base of the driveway. I can't do, I mean, physically, I can't do it. Um, and it's also incredibly wildly frustrating if I've already dug out my driveway, but, you know, to, to have, it, have to do it again, um, to either turn the plow or uh, just shut, I mean, shove it up against the, I don't care, dump it in my yard. Um, it, it's fine with me. It's not like I'm saying don't leave it in my yard. I understand the snow has to go somewhere. What I don't want it to do, but the way it, the way it goes now is that as soon as it hits a large open space, after that curve, it releases. And it's releasing right there. I mean, even you told me this. Yeah. That it lets loose. So, and right your there. feeling is that you're, this is somewhat unique. It is somewhat unique. Yeah. I mean, nobody else is getting this. Okay. Nobody else is getting this. So we could, I, I, nobody on my street. So, so, so let me street. let's give uh, Ned a chance to so, address it now. So I would say either push the snow somewhere else or let me hire yeah. a plow and you guys, you know, compensate. Well, <clears throat> it's a citywide problem. It's not just Liberty Street. Anyone who lives in a similar circumstance gets the same thing. Once that snow that releases off the snow, the bank's not there, it's dumping that full blade in the opening, which is a driveway, an entrance, or something of that nature. The intersecting side streets get the worst of it because you get the heads built up there. We go back and push back the heads just for safe visibility, but um, you know, Sandy's not alone in this. Um, you know, the, the driver could try to carry some of it past, but it's just going to carry it down the street and then distribute it in other people's driveways too to some degree. Uh, it is done with an angle plow, so the operator does have some control on the street rather than a fixed wing. If it was a fixed wing plow, there'd be no relief. It just can't articulate itself to move snow in different directions. So uh, I know she's not alone in the city. We get complaints about it quite. In fact, we have people that stand at the end of the drivers with their shovels. <laughs> and you now it's... <laughs> part of our operations. I mean, we can try to see if we can at least move it down the street a little bit further, but it's going to end up somewhere else. We don't do driveways. We don't plow into people's yards. We do push back intersections, so that's the only thing that we work with on pushing snow back on. Is, is it the same driver essentially every it's time? It's the same route. It could be a different driver. Most that's what I don't know offhand is whose route it is. If it's a contract operator, which sometimes the driver's sick, you could have a contract operator, <coughs> a person who doesn't do the regular route. But usually the person gets a route, they're assigned to that route for years on end. Yeah, they become familiar church. with it, they, they know the area, they know where the raised manhole covers are and deficiencies are. So we try to keep it somewhat uniform in our plow drivers. Yeah. I'm actually right around the corner from you, Sandy. I live on the corner of Warner and Norwood. Oh. And uh, have experienced exactly what you have experienced. It, it had been Mr. Church for a number of years. Okay. He was, but last year it was DPW staff. It was a DPW truck. It was an orange truck. It could have been John still with just a different vehicle. But, uh, it, but what you were describing doesn't just happen to you. It, it happens wherever the driveway is open. And I've been out there shoveling, having just shoveled and had the same experience. Uh, we actually have the fortune that one of, the, one of our neighbors comes around with a snowblower when this happens and sort of clears it for us because, I mean, there have been times when I've been lifting snow up over my head to try to put it on the bags. That's impossible. When I try to convince my teenagers to do it, they don't. <laughs> is there anything about the uh, the curve that is a little unusual? Or? Yeah, yeah. I, I was up there just before the meeting, and it, it is on the curve. And it is, it's typical. Yeah. Any one of those curves, if you've got a driveway in there, that's where the plow leaves it, I mean. Right. Yeah, I mean, you sometimes think, do it's I... It's inherent with the sweep. 
Do I just wait until the plows have come by several times and then go out and do it? Because that way you don't have to backfill from the, the, the street plow pushing into your driveway. At least is there's something you to hold back. You may not back. be able to get in and out. Yeah, no. That's the problem. I have, you know, although I don't have the same problem. But if I want to get out, i got to clear the end of my driveway. And it could get pushed back in again, especially on Ryan Road. Mm -hmm. They've opened down that about six times. Uh, it, it is somewhat a unique shaped driveway because the, the sides of it are steep like this mm -hmm. and the driveway has been cut into the, a bank, a natural bank that is there. So there's, it's like an empty bucket where the, you know, as the plow goes by. But it's, it's artificially difficult because it's in this buck, uh, sort of trough shaped yeah, situation. Like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Good. And if the plow can't throw the snow prior to the house, it's just building up more and more snow behind the plow. and Because of the bank. Right, yeah. and then it's just going to let itself go. Yeah. Uh, would it be practical to ask the driver to change the angle briefly? As we can we can have the conversation with them. Um, you know, if we have a regular route driver there, we can have that conversation. But like I said, if he calls in sick, we have a contactor. It might be difficult to get that word to them on that particular event. Right. I've always wondered if we put up those reflectors, you know, um, at the end of our driveways, if the drivers would ever pay any mind to those. Because <laughs> <No. laughs> I do know when I'm out there shoveling, they do try to avoid gone. me. <laughs> yeah. they, don't, they don't work. <laughs> you know, the other thing that people don't realize, you're, you're dealing with people that have been driving 12, 16, 18 hours straight, yeah. and they get tired, and things happen too. So it's, there's there's some fatigue factor in there too. It, this this happens to be in a very unusual location, and uh, I, I don't give it a lot of chance of, of, of being corrected, but certainly uh, a talk with the driver could possibly help a little. Mm -hmm. Do you have any of your neighbors who have snowblowers? Because that's the only thing that saved us last year was... I have a neighbor who has a snowblower and the... Um, can I do this or not? Um, I'm, my husband died and mm -hmm. I'm trying to do this on my own. Mm -hmm. I learned how to mow the lawn for the first time. I, drove, I shoveled out driveways for the first time. And it's pathetic yeah. to see me standing out there <laughs> crying because I can't do it. And I am really <coughs> physically strong. I am a really strong uh, arm wrestle. Anybody in this room? <laughs> I am really strong. And I've gotten a lot stronger in the last, I can't move five feet, eight inches of ice. I can't do it. Nobody in this room could do it. And I don't have the money to hire an excavator to get out of my driveway. I mean, no one here has ever had to hire an excavator where the plow guy comes by and says, I'm not going to ruin my plow to dig out your driveway. Well, that's actually happened downtown quite a bit. <coughs> um, Trevor at First Church has been a couple of years ago. The snow was so bad that we had to hire an excavator to come in and to chop up all the hard packed ice and, and that it frozen right along Center Street. Because we, well, we'd, we'd send our sexton out, she would shovel it, the next thing we know this, the town plows would come by, splash everything back, and we had to hire an excavator. Well, so I hired the excavator. It came out of my pocket. It came out of my money. And, D and Dave Murphy said, submit the bill. And I said, no, I want to do this. I don't want to, it's like, how long would it take to chase this kind of money? It's crazy. I, but I said to him, I'm going to come before the snow falls and say, this can't go on. I, this can't go on. It's not normal. It's an unusual driveway. It's an unusual spot. It is hard to, it is, it's hard. I mean, you're here, and I, I appreciate that you all went by and looked at my house. I'm glad you take your job so seriously. It's great. Uh, I, I certainly understand what you're saying, but it's not our property. It's yours. And the way it was built and the way it's constructed, it's amenable to that kind of thing happening. We cannot be responsible for your property. If we did that, we'd be responsible for all of the property in the city. 
and we can't do it. We don't have the money, the manpower, to do that kind of thing. I'm just asking that the yeah. city not trespass hmm. on my land. You're asking God not to send the snow so that it doesn't <coughs> trespass on your property because we have to move it off of the streets. I, I Believe me, I, I sympathize with you. I know exactly what you're going through, but it's, it's something that is impossible for the city to cure. We can try to distribute it a little bit, but I don't know if it's possible. We, we can certainly agree to have the bring it to the plow driver's sure. attention, talk about ways to maybe slightly modify the way he handles the snow right there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's true. Yeah, that's the only thing. If there's a different driver, if it's, you know, but make some effort to... No, yeah, we can have the conversation. Okay. And then should I just do what Dave Murphy said to do? Which is to, if I can't, if I can't dig it out, get a plow, and then just send the bill to the city, and then start fighting about that. That be something through the city claims committee yeah. that will go through, since it's general fund related. You have to file a claim with the uh, council um, executive secretary. She manages all the claims in the city from the general side. I mean, you'd be astonished at what I've been able to dig. It was that mm -hmm. picture. Mm -hmm. It was when that happened. Oh, I, I, I said, I, I'm done. I, I can't do this. I know. All right. Well. Um, so, all right. So we've agreed that we're going to talk to the plow driver. Or yep. I will. Within the department. Um, we certainly uh, sympathize with your problem. That's, I think, as far as we can take it tonight. Okay. And can I call you if it doesn't seem like? Sure. Okay. Please. Not a problem. Because I feel like I'm trying everything that I can. Um, All right. Well, thanks for bringing it to us, and uh, thanks. Let's, yeah, I hope this will work. And I really do think you went by to actually see it. Nice to you. I think you want so seriously. I appreciate it. Uh, okay. A uh, contract for winter salt, speaking of winter, to. Right. We care organics <laughs> in the amount of $113,000. They don't care very much. <laughs> <laughs> And they can't control themselves. Yeah. Oh, rule. Second. Oh, uh, no, sorry. Second. <clears throat> second. At least. This is our annual contract for purchasing what we call treated salt. <coughs> um, it's cheaper than last year. Last year was $84.66 a ton. This year is $78.44. So oh, it's dropped a little bit. They do care. <laughs> yeah. And is it organic salt? Uh, the the <laughs> treated the on the salt. Sea salt. <laughs> it's free range. <laughs> the treatment of the salt is with an organic is based de icer, which allows the salt to work at lower temperatures. Okay. Uh, there's two other bidders on it, um, range from 83.20 a ton to 97.50 a ton. Now, is this different from the stuff that they used to mix in the backyard? This is pre made, pre mixed. And is it? more cost-effective than mixing it ourselves? We believe it is because the, the toll it takes on the equipment to churn all this stuff and mix it up and move it several times, and the salt just eats up the equipment. Okay. So we yeah. buy a pre we used, to, we used to take bucket loaders and like three guys with shovels turning the... It's more uniform also because it's mixing a pug mill at the factory, so you know, I think we get a better consistent product than doing it ourselves. Jim? Have we used this one before? Yes. These people in yes. there? So we're not getting chunks and... No. Okay. We're getting good product. All right. What's the chemical that's mixed? In it's an organic base de-icer. Basically, it's a, a byproduct of distillery. Is typically what it's from, like a rum distillery. It smells like molasses, basically. It's like a big margarita. It looks like soy sauce. It smells like, yeah. it smells like soy sauce, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. MJ? Uh, I was just going to ask, do, when we put our bid up, did we ask for something organic, or did it just... Definitely? We asked for it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, sole source contract of ViewWorks annual technical support. Oh. Mm -hmm. One, number three. We missed number three. Or, or we could talk about a one-year extension <laughs> to the contract for foaming root control. 
Oh. Two dukes. Oh, oh. This is the. Shake uh, price. Pardon me? Shake price? Yes. Yes. Uh, last year we spent $9,811.05. And the contract, two year contract, was not to exceed $24,999. So we believe we'll be well under our contractual limits. And um, it's a yearly treatment we do of our problematic areas in the city. They're one of the companies that, that I used extensively when we first started doing root control uh, in our sewer lines. And, uh, they're really the leader in the, in the country. They're, they're countrywide. So it does it kill the roots? Or what, what does it yes. do? Yeah. What, it, what it does, uh, it, it folds the whole sewer and uh, then the roots will will dry and drop off. And if a sewer plugs within a year, they'll come back and redo it for nothing. So they, they, they've been very yeah. good. Here. Does it do anything to the tree? No. Okay. The roots so keep coming so back. It's very local. That's why yeah, it's a little roots to yearly back. treatment. Yeah, okay. yeah the, uh, uh, the chemical makeup was approved by the Board of Health uh, and DEP. Uh, we made sure of that before we even started using it. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is it an acidic? Is it an acid or? I can't tell you exactly what it is. What is it? I knew what it was at one time, but I forgot. It's a secret formula. No. <laughs> proprietary. Only proprietary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it works. Is it, what percentage of the city does it cover? I mean, it's like. I couldn't tell you how many. you get to in a year, essentially? Or? No, it's no. actually the problematic areas that we go back year to year. It's, a, it's like we do a, we call it red hot routine, mm -hmm. which is the greasy areas of the city. Mm -hmm. We put on a material called red hot down the sewers and it cuts the grease out. So okay. we have these problematic areas that we deal with on a monthly or quarterly or a yearly basis, depending I, on the I need. I would think it'd be two or three percent of the system, I, I couldn't if tell it's you that high. Mm -hmm. So it's a couple, three miles. Yeah. All in favor of approving the extension to this contract? Aye. 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 Now, the sole source contract for annual technical support and maintenance to view work in view works in the amount of $20,000. Oh, second. This is our new, um, our uh, core service call work order center resource manager and commission risk modules that we're using. And we're ready to start rolling out ViewWorks probably in the next week or two, which starting off as our call center work order. We've actually stopped, couldn't stop using our old center. We purchased the software, I think, eight months ago or so, nine months ago or so. So we're getting ready to implement it. And with it, we are looking for annual technical support and maintenance of the program. It's a subscription program, so we'll provide us with updates all the time with it. And any technical support we need as we're trying to get this new process started. ViewWorks is also going to be used um, at this time for our risk management of our utilities, doing our asset management program. So we were looking at a company that could provide us everything we want to do here for the future and not just be a call center type uh, work order device. So that underneath the comprehensive wastewater management plan and the other utility asset management we're planning, the, that's why you're seeing ViewWorks being incorporated in those uh, interview processes because we want to use that product going forward. So risk management would keep track of when the most recent maintenance is? Or what do you, you mean know, by risk, risk management? Risk management, basically, you're, you're looking at a system that would be able to you know, use it to find the risk of failure and the consequence of failure, what's going to happen in the system, so that you can come up with a capital plan as to when you want to replace certain utilities. like. Um, you know, if a pump station's got a 30-year lifespan, probably in year 25, you should start planning for it. I mean, those ones are pretty simple, but how else do you deal with particular valve replacements, pipe replacement programs, and where to put your best dollar that if this system fails, you're going to affect 10,000 customers versus this section fails, same type thing, it only affects 2,000 people. So it's a little bit like a pavement management. Exactly. Any other questions? Uh, all in favor oh, of approving can, the... Can I ask a question? Oh, sure. I'm sorry. 
Sorry, I wasn't fast enough to let my hand go down. Um, will this help us track the requests that have come in from yes. constituents who That's what have for. issues? And, it's and, a, it's and so we might be able to share with them where they are on the list? In exactly. Terms of and it's, it is um, GIS driven, mm -hmm. so that it's parcel location specific, so that if um, Sandy calls in, oh, I see that you called us last month for the same exact issue, we haven't gotten to it yet. I'm not going to take out another work order because there's one existing for it, but it's been flagged that you called twice now and the problem hasn't been rectified. And that's what we're missing in our current program is that we have work orders that are two years out that are they closed? We don't know. I mean, things like that because it's just a, it's not a great database driven product that we have here. Thank you. Um, okay, all in favor of approving the contract for Aye. a few works? Aye. 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 Uh, change order number four to... Can I get a demo of it at some point? Can you sure. It sometime? Absolutely. That's a great idea. I think that's a great idea, too. I think yeah. a show in fact. Maybe I'll yeah. just call in. Uh, just call in. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Watch our what complaint work its way through the system. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I so, hope they know every time I call in. Okay, change order number four to contract 9998 for the Damon Road transportation improvements to Vanas Hangin Brustlin Inc. BHB. BHB. BHB, 215. Second. Second. Yeah. They've been our consultant on this project since 1998, uh, way before I got here. And what we're trying to do is move this to 25% review with the state. What we're trying to do is um, the state has asked to get it to 25% review so that they can break off the component between King Street and the industrial park and try to treat that as a separate project so that they can deal with this when the rail corridor comes through. So that we get the signals built at the industrial park and all the timing is set in sequence for those three sets of lights. So the real issue is trying to get it to a 25% review from the state, and then we can piecemeal out this portion as a separate job that would get into TIP funding uh, much earlier than the entire multi-million dollar Damon Road project. So this change order reduces the scope? Apparently it costs more money. But no, the, the actually the... Uh, the contract is out of money. Uh, work stopped roughly two years ago or so. Remember, the, I think the last thing we did it was the bike path, uh, the, the uh, tunnel going underneath. Right. That's the last work that's been done on Damon Road. It hasn't been a high priority project, but it has been worked on. It's like I said, this is to finally get it to 25, so we can have a public <coughs> hearing on it. And we talked to the railroads once about the, the rail bed going across the street, and they, I remember, was that, I think it was you who told, said they laughed at you on the phone, because mm -hmm. that's our problem, not their problem. Are these signals our problem, not their problem? Uh, the signals are theirs. Uh, my understanding that uh, I think the current owner is Pan Am Railways. They've signed a long-term lease with Amtrak to do track upgrades and run the new high-speed corridor that they're looking at doing. Um, and like I said, this work is to try to move this project along so that we at least get the, the, the lights at the industrial park, which is part of the Damon Road project, and get that in built and coordinated with the corridor that's coming in two years from now, or less than two years from they're planning on it, and also phase that signal with the King Street intersection. It doesn't make sense to try to piecemeal this after the fact, and. Um, we're trying to see if that tip money will roll in much faster because of the need of the knowledge corridor coming in. Does the knowledge corridor bump north of Springfield? I mean, I know there's been talking about bringing it up into Northampton, but are we looking at high speed from oh, Springfield yeah. north? Oh, yeah. We're going up to uh, at least White River, if not further. I think the goal is to get it into Montreal. So we're talking something like 79, 80 miles an hour, running outside the city limits within city limits being 40 miles an hour. So you see them much faster than the current trains that run through Northampton right now. Any other questions? Uh, all in favor of approving the change order? Aye. 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 <coughs> uh,
contract for wetland delineation and permitting for the leachate plant decommissioning to GZA in the amount of $6,800. Oh, cool. A couple of board meetings ago, the board had approved a contract with Wright Pierce Engineers to do the uh, engineering associated with decommissioning the leachate plant at the landfill. Part of that project is going to uh, require a permit under the Wetlands Protection Act for some site work and other things that will be happening in buffer zones and areas that are regulated under the Wetlands Protection Act. So we had uh, requested proposals from Stantec and from GZA um, to do this local permitting. Uh, Wright Pierce is out of Andover. We felt that the more local company would be a, a better way to go with the local permitting here with the, with the commission. Um, so this. <clears throat> this contract for $1,600 is for GZA to do the wetlands delineation and the notice of intent work for that, um, for that project. Um, I think Stantec was, uh, I don't remember exactly what the proposal was. It was about $1,200 more, I think, than GZA was. Two bidders only. Two. Okay. Any other questions? Sixty-eight. Okay, I've heard it sounded like sixteen. I thought, wait a second, I like that number better. Yeah. <laughs> this one is definitely not sixteen hundred. Okay. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And finally, the occupation of Pulaski Park. I just want to bring to the board's attention that we have a group of protesters down there that are part of the, I guess, uh, protesting corporate greed and bank greed and everything else. Uh, camping out down in Pulaski Park. Um, I talked to Russ Sinkowitz, Chief Sinkowitz, about this. Apparently when the protest started, they were able to occupy four or five parking spaces downtown, and then they wanted to stay overnight. Russ made the decision to usher them into the park rather than have them sleeping on the streets of Northampton, sidewalks, parking areas, and so on. They've been there since uh, the protest started. To my understanding, there's three or four people that sleep overnight, and on any given day, there's at least two or three people continuing the protests on a 24-hour basis. Um, they wanted to set up tents. They weren't allowed to do that, so they're sleeping out underneath the stars. Um, they are eating in the park. Um, I'm sure they're using someone's facilities somewhere. Uh, I don't know where. Uh, I haven't heard any complaints from the Academy of Music at this point. But uh, they do not have a permit from the Department of Public Works to be there. I just want to make you aware of it. Um, talking with the police chief, he thought that they are they're being civil. They're cleaning up after themselves. And he does not see it to be an issue as long as they're respecting uh, what the police officers are requiring down there. So it's fairly peaceful. I walked through there today. There was a gentleman down there playing guitar and singing along. and a couple other people holding some placards out there. Didn't someone come in to get a permit, though? I was told that. I didn't. That's what Ann said. To, yeah. You got all the information to get a permit, but we haven't seen anything come back on a permit. So I'm not sure if there's any direction the board wants to take on this. You do control what happens down at the park. Like I said, the, the police department says as long as they're civil and courteous and uh, abiding by what they feel is being reasonable, that they don't have an issue in the park. Do we have any um, any group that's gotten a permit from us that's coming up soon that might be required? And the question will be when they come to exercise <coughs> their permit. I don't know offhand if we have any conflicts at this moment. I can get can you Davis. But that's really the thing thought. that I wanted to talk to the acting mayor about today and uh, was waiting for a return phone call. Make sure that he's okay with what's going on in the park also. They seem to have a general assembly at 3 o'clock every afternoon to talk about issues and share. Large group? It had been larger earlier in the week. seems to be diminishing. But not enough to have to use that new angled microphone system. They're doing shout-outs. <laughs> so, you know, uh, Russ also talked, our Chief Sinkwood talked about the fact that cold weather's coming, rain tonight might be a deterrent, and we'll see how long it lasts. It's supposed to be cold, too, tonight. Mm -hmm. I just got to I really spent them. Yeah. 
Yeah. Actually, they had um, Polish Heritage Parade on Monday. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they were there. Oh, you would never we didn't know. Hear, no, we didn't they hear. Were, it was, but I mean, no the issue. protesters yeah. were also there. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't hear all anything all back from them. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, there's nothing else. Okay. Polish Heritage. Oh, that's a big parade. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's Heritage yeah. Parade. Any other comments? Just left this line. All right. Uh, there's no the old business for today. For? Um, yes, none. <laughs> <laughs> next next week, uh, next meeting, I guess we're going to have the Solid Waste uh, Action Committee. Does he have some stuff for us, I think? Well, we have a meeting next week. Yeah. So, yeah. And um, Karen Boquillen is going to come in and give us an update on the bag program and vehicle sticker sales and just where that's all at. Um, Ned and I spoke earlier about that discussion we just sort of started about whether there ought to be any policy about change orders on contracts coming in in a timely manner. And yeah, I believe it's under the retake plant decommissioning. There was a notification they had to inform us when they had 80% of the contract gone through, if I remember right. Well, it sounded good, and so uh, they're working on it. Gary, is there anything you had wish we would talk about? No? Jim? Yeah, um, roundabout. Roundabout. <clears throat> what are we doing up there with the reconstruction? Aren't uh, they coming in on that? Pardon me? Isn't the contractor coming back on that? He's supposed to. We've sent a letter, we had a final inspection about Three and a half weeks ago, we sent Mass Hilo and Mass DOT a letter what we're looking to have repaired, reconstructed, fixed, along with supporting documentation from our engineers, Weston and Sampson. They did a walkthrough and a final inspection also, and also incorporating some issues that Look Park has on their property with it also. I haven't heard a response back from Mass DOT. And you sent a letter, what, three weeks ago? No, the inspection was, the letter went out middle of last week. Oh. All right. So we're waiting to see what they come up with as uh, fixes to the apron cracking that's yeah. ongoing. Yeah. And uh, the other biggest issue is the very poor quality grass that's mm. coming out of it. Okay. I just want to, don't want to let that ride. Nope. That's all. Grass in the middle or around the? Grass everywhere. Everywhere. I'm the chairman for running a very efficient meeting today. Well, I <laughs> see here. Oh, it might be a little oh, picture. It's <laughs> 6 08. We're not obligated to make this any longer than necessary. All right. Is it going to be your record? I don't know. I don't know. So we've got to hustle around. Check the brass plaque and see. <laughs> yeah. Just in your board package, a letter from Paige Brody in regards to um, some Thanksgiving for a project we did down on our street. Replacing a sewer line. Other than that, I have nothing. Okay, great. Jim, how about you? You know, I don't have any Red Sox game to go home to tonight. Mm -hmm. So, so we could linger last, and we could linger. Or Yankee. Yeah. There's a Powder Puff game at high school. We could chat. <laughs> I'm football. looking for a way to fill that gap here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Phil, Make looking for a way to fill time? Make sure I have some beer yeah. and fried chicken. That's right. Hi. Hi. Biscuits and fried chicken. Biscuits chicken. Biscuits and fried chicken. Yeah. MJ, how about you? I like your signs, by the way. Thank you. Um, didn't we have it last time on the agenda that this meeting we were going to talk about the TIF, the transportation plan? Or did I misunderstand? Didn't you send something out in advance of last meeting so that we would... No? Yes. I'll go back and look at my records. Well, so. well on the Never board, mind. Huh? <laughs> well, on the board package, there was a copy of that transportation. Oh, the plan yeah. itself. Yeah. Yeah. And did they want any more just from information? Okay. If you want to have a discussion about it, we, we can. Mm -hmm. I was just information providing what's going on. That's it. Yeah. David, how about you? No. Okay. 
supposed to do. No. No. I'm Great. I'm supportive of you. I make a motion we adjourn. Second. Can I ask a quick question though? Oh, oh, yeah. The uh, the last meeting though, you did talk about making like starting to talk about the recommendations of the solid waste um, action committee, whatever we were on that task force, and start putting that onto the agenda. So I'm just curious when that is expected to start. Items like that. Is that what? I thought that's what you meant when you said Karen was coming in next week or next yeah, time when we were going to start talking about that. Start is that what it is? Okay. Thank you. All right. So here it is. Now it's only 10 after all. Yes. 11. Okay. Oh, yes. all in favor of adjourning. Yes. Aye.